Hey everyone, this is Disc Junkie and you are listening to an audio commentary track for the American Blu-ray release of one of my all-time favorite found footage horror movies, and that is the Poughkeepsie Tapes. Now, before making any kind of scene-specific remarks, I just want to give a brief backstory and summary and sort of explain why I want to do this commentary track. This film was originally distributed or planned for distribution back in 2007 and it made a brief theatrical run. However, before it got released it was essentially pulled by MGM, which was the distributor at the time. And then it spent about 10 years in distribution limbo all the way up until 2017 when we got this new Blu-ray version. However, during this time span uh, there was a version leaked online which was you know circulated through various file sharing sites and bootleg dvds and yada yada Uh, and everyone just assumed that this was the version of the movie as it should be but then when the blu-ray came out i and probably some other people with me noticed that there were actually quite different films and essentially basically two different movies altogether based on the cuts and so I actually got in touch with the directors themselves, or one of them, and spoke with Mr. John Eric Dowdle. And he sort of explained to me that the version, you know, back in 2007, the version that they screened in Tribeca, that is the same as the Blu-ray version. However, the rough cut or bootleg that was leaked online, that is actually based on a festival submission rough cut, which was never intended for public viewing. And so I want to take this time to go over most of the differences, as many as I can, and sort of explain, show them to you while they're shown on screen. And, uh, well, we can just start by talking about this. All of the opening footage which you've seen up until this point That is completely new footage. Everything up until the title sequence, which is currently playing, that's stuff that was never made available prior to the 2017 Blu-ray release. The original rough cut version of the film essentially just opened with a 30 second clip of the killer's, you know, quote unquote, home movies, where he's just shown sort of dragging a body sort of slightly off camera and then the tripod trips over. Um, And then we got to the title sequence, which you are watching right now. And the title sequence is exactly the same as it was, you know, it's the same in both versions. And I love the title sequence. I think it's a really, really great uh, introduction to an awesome movie. Uh, But I love the new stuff. I think that the new introduction sequence prior to the title sequence are much better than the old 30 second clip that we originally uh, got shown. And, I mean, all the stuff with, like, the home movies showing Cheryl when she's a little girl, I think that's just such great stuff. Now, the opening scene with Alice Andersard is essentially exactly the same, but it seems to be sourced from different materials, seeing as the sunlight is different. And there's also a a 50-second cut where she originally mentioned that, uh, you know, sort of asking the cameraman whether or not the camera, whether he's rolling or not, and they removed that. I don't know why, but I... I don't know, I sort of like that little sort of amateuristic cut, but yeah, doesn't really matter. Now, the scene with Simon Alray here, that was essentially longer. Um, You can see the insert with the tapes, that's essentially all new. They sort of added the inserts over the original dialogue. Um, And, I mean, all the footage is actually there. I mean, the original scene ran longer, but they essentially cut the scene and they moved parts of the interview and and included it in different parts of the movie. So all the footage is there, it's just, you know, comprised and compiled in a different way. Like, now we're cutting back to him, whereas originally this segment might have appeared earlier or later. I can't remember off the top of my head, but sort of that's what I'm talking about. And I mean, there are a lot of differences sort of like this. We have an upcoming scene with Alice again, where she's walking through the house, uh, where they essentially did the same thing. You can see that you have sort of photographic inserts right here of the tapes. That's stuff that's been added on the Blu-ray, which was never present in the old version. And it's quite possible that the walkthrough with Alice in the house is also sourced from new material. Uh, But I can't really tell. I mean, it's hard to compare a crisp, clean Blu-ray compared to an old online file sharing, which is crap quality. Uh, Now, looking at the scene with Pam in the backyard, This is exactly the same, but there's a minor cut to the dialogue where she mentions that one of the bodies in the backyard was one of the, was the original tenant 
of the house, which I think is an interesting that they remove that. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter to the story, but just found it odd. This scene where, I don't know, if, is that Simon Alvary? I can't really tell because it looks a bit different. But this scene in particular was completely missing from the old version, which I think is a bit odd, seeing that it's such a, such a pivotal scene. Uh, and also, you know, the theatrical poster and the cover image for the film was based on that specific scene. So, uh, you know, by that standard, I think it's a bit strange that it was never included in the in the festival or rough cut screening copy version. Now, in the upcoming scene with Simon Alray, uh, there was originally a scene which preceded this scene. Uh, and the scene which I'm talking about, it was just an 11 second clip, but it featured uh, the retired FBI profiler Mike Mokes, who now appears at a different point in the story. And it was just a brief second clip where he mentioned that uh, the tapes are now mandatory viewing for anyone getting into FBI profiling. And, you know, I'm sort of sad that they removed it because I thought it was always a very sort of nice introduction to Mike's character and I'm not sure why it was removed. I mean basically the stuff with Mike has also been cut and sort of moved around a bit much like the uh, the scenes with uh, Simon Alray and Alice Anderson and all that so I think all of the footage with Mike is essentially still there except for this very very brief scene this 11 second clip where he's introduced and now we can see him introduced on the blu-ray we also see his name on screen which was obviously not here in the old version because then it was you know added on top of a scene which was presented earlier so I mean yeah it all makes sense and I'm sorry if I'm mentioning stuff that's uh, not really that important but I mean that's just you know that's just the way I am I, I spent so many hours and time sort of going back and forth trying to compare the two versions and I didn't even have like a, a version on my computer so I could do like a you know screen to screen comparison I essentially just watched a bootleg DVD watched like a minute and a half and then I flipped over and watched my Blu-ray parallel to that, sort of switching sources on the TV. Uh, it was like a whole process. I think it took me like a month to go through the entire thing. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, this is an interesting scene. And this is probably one of the few scenes which I think that it was actually better in the original version. Uh, now I do like, I mean, the quality on all of this stuff, like going over to Blu-ray, everything looks so much better and there's so much stuff, like in this scene which is so dark, there's like, there's things in the car and sort of things in the scene which I didn't even see in the old version because everything was so dark and the picture quality wasn't good, but what I want to mention about this specific scene is that in the old rough cut version there was basically like this really ominous and sort of mysterious and dark score. It's actually a musical score on the scene which is quite uncommon. I mean it's not like this film has a very, very sort of wide musical scoring but in this scene specifically there was sort of like a I don't know, just like a low rumbling sort of going like like you know it didn't it I mean when I first watched this, I watched the new version, I know that this was one of the instances where I really went like, no, come on, there's something, something's not right. This was one of those instances, you know, the, the old scoring was so sort of imprinted in my memory that when I watched this scene, I just went like, you know, something's not right. This is not the same version that I've sort of grown accustomed to. And um, I'm not really sure why they changed it, um, but I mean... I think a lot of it as to why I have a problem with this new version that doesn't have any co sort of musical cue to it. I think that it's just a question of nostalgia and, you know, I'm not used to it. Because, I mean, looking at it, I suppose that, you know, not having the musical score might actually be more disturbing in that it's sort of, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't feel fake or added, it feels much more, uh, you know, it's much more documentary style footage when you don't have any sort of 
musical score in the background to sort of heighten the tension. You know, it's sort of, I guess it does take a bit away uh, sort of adding music to it because then it becomes much more apparent that this is a fictionalized account of what happened. Whereas, you know, you want to present the idea that it is uh, an actual, actual footage. Now, another thing which I have to mention about this scene specifically is on account of the lighting. Uh, I mean, the old version was so dark, like I mentioned, and the whole thing that he actually grabs the girl and throws her in the back seat, I didn't even realize this when I was watching the old version. So, I mean, that's how dark it was. So it always confused me a little bit, seeing like, I thought he just hit her on the head and ran away, but then the story tells us that he abducts her, which is missing, so... Yeah, definitely an improvement in terms of the advances of technology. But I mean, this is also the thing, like, I mean, like, a, with a lot of these sort of, you know, changes and restorations, I mean, the movie looks great on Blu-ray. I absolutely love it. <laughs> but I mean, I gotta say that going through the films, uh, actually comparing, like, the old rough cut version to the new Blu-ray version... It was incredibly tedious and difficult trying to find all the differences. Because, I mean, the movie looks so fresh on Blu-ray. It looks so crisp. Like, this scene, it was like... I'm going back and forth and I'm thinking, like, it's the same clip? And then, no, it's not. It's different source material or it's just looking better. You know, it's so hard. But this scene with the parents of the missing girl... That is actually sourced from different material. I'm quite sure that, you know, I can confirm this. I really went back and forth trying to realize, but it looks like it is. And there's actually also a large segment of footage which is missing from this. Uh, you see where it consoles her um, at the end. Originally, there was a, you know, sh sort of short segment of dialogue where he essentially asks the camera team to, like, turn off the camera when his wife starts crying. But there is also a missing, um, you know, segment of dialogue, which is actually 22 seconds long. So uh, I guess it's, you know, I was pretty sorry to see that they removed this. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's nothing particularly important to the story. It's essentially just, uh, you know, one of the parents mentions that... Uh, they wanted to one of they one of them wanted to move away uh, after the incident, uh, and the other one wanted to to stay behind. Um, but um, I mean, there there's a lot of stuff like that, and there's like I said, I mean, you have cuts to a lot of scenes where you know they take away dialogue uh, or they they add these little news clips, which is one of the things that they've done throughout the movie, which is really like a very sort of recurring change where they, they add little news segments that wasn't there in the beginning, uh, or they actually change new segments, which I think is quite remarkable. Uh, this scene in particular where the, uh, you know, the couple in the car, which is one of the scenes which I remember most vividly from watching the rough cut version, uh, this has thankfully not been changed at all. It appears in exactly the same way as it was in the rough cut version. I mean, the Blu-ray and the rough cut are exactly the same on, on this scene, which I am thankful for, because it is a great scene, just one of those. I guess just sort of a very disturbing scene. Also, I can mention that in the Blu-ray version, you can actually see that the killer takes out a hammer, which I didn't even realize when I was watching the poor quality rough cut version. Um, also, in regards to, like, when I'm doing all this talking about different characters and stuff, uh, I sort of decided early on to just mention them by their character name, as opposed to mentioning the actor's name, and that's just because it became so much simpler to do this, uh, just trying to keep track of what's what, and also all of my, you know, previous notes that I made prior to the recording was based on character names, so it just became a lot easier to, to keep track, so that's why I'm doing that. In any regards, uh, just talking about the upcoming scene here, which is a great example of some of the stuff that's very sort of recurring changes that they made, uh, is that they added a lot of these sort of new sensors, like this, for instance, with Leah McLean. This is something which was never part of the original version. It's just a newly added insert, which sort of adds to the story in terms of what's going on. And I think it's a really good way that they changed it. It really does help to sort of perfect and move the story along in a really nice way.
And another thing which you will notice throughout the film is that they've actually changed like a lot of the interviewer news segments, I guess I should say. Uh, sometimes they change the actors, other times they just sort of change the digital overlay, like they'll change like the TV network logos and things like that, and just sort of updating the fonts and making it look better, essentially. So I think all of this stuff is essentially really good. Now, this segment with Mike Mokes is kind of interesting, because in the original version, uh, or the rough cut version, I keep saying original rough cut, yeah, yeah, the old version, the rough cut that was leaked, um, there's essentially quite a long segment, about 1 minute and 52 seconds, where Mike explains and sort of talks about the importance of leaving your work at work. Uh, and I'm sort of sad that they didn't include it, because it does definitely sort of add and sort of flesh out his character. And he also mentions the fact that his sister was actually abducted uh, at a young age, and that's sort of like the primary reason for why he sort of got into profiling so... I mean, I just, you know, I just found this to be really sad to see this clip go because it's such a, you know, fleshing out of the Mike Mokes character. And I always thought he was one of the very sort of memorable characters in the in the film in terms of the the people that aren't, uh, you know, that don't, that don't have a major part in the film. I always thought that he was one of those guys who was really memorable in terms of the uh, sort of sidekicks or supporting cast members also this clip with the uh, the footage of the girl is also one of those things which has been so improved in terms of picture quality and now you can actually see like that she has like uh, you know disturbing cut and wound on her abdomen so i mean there's so much stuff like this which sort of you know improves with the quality just because it is you know better on blu-ray so yeah in the hell you can also see just when he turns off the TV, walks up to the camera, you see a cut, and then you see him again. And so, right here, basically. And then you see him walk away. That's the cut where the missing footage should be. And then, you know, yeah, this uh, this clip with Kimberly Plummer, the news clip, that's actually a completely new footage, uh, which was inserted, was never present. And this also, the inserts where you see the the body on at the morgue in this autopsy scene uh, the shots of the body on the on the steel gurney there uh, essentially the entire scene is identical to the way it was in the old version but you will see that the inserts showing the body in the abdomen or the head in the abdomen uh, the inserts are new but everything else is unchanged and i mean it's yeah, there's really a lot of stuff like this, and I think that the, if you're talking about, I mean this, I mean the autopsy, the entire film is a very sort of disturbing piece of cinema in the way that it's shot and like all the details and sort of gore or gruesome nature of the footage, I think is just, you know, that that's sort of what gives it the edge to me, and that's sort of why I so, so much fell in love with it, in that it's 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 ruthless in a sense and it doesn't apologize i mean the the whole thing with sort of you know deteriorating the tapes and stuff i really think that helps add to the tension and the sort of authenticity of it i know a lot of people don't like it but i really like it oh this scene with mike mokes again where they talk about the red house tavern which is main mentioned right about now uh, the dialogue is essentially exactly the same, but they did add some new st sort of stills here, showing the Red House Tavern, as Mike is talking about it. So, I mean, this is, you know, sort of like the prime example of how they make these little edits to the the earlier version that are... It's just a question of perfecting the movie, like I mentioned before. I mean, personally... I mean, it's, it is essentially all for the better, I think. There are, I mean, if I were to choose between the old version and the new version, I would go with the new version, definitely. Because, I mean, there are some scenes obviously missing, which I'm very sad about, but there's also some new stuff which are so amazing and, and awesome. I'll, and I'll get back to that once we have it. Now, in this, here's one of those very minor changes I hardly noticed. Uh, in this cut here, where she says... Elizabeth Jackson, and they start talking about Elizabeth Jackson. In the original cut of this clip, 
the uh, the woman in the scene, girl from the backyard, pointing at the bodies, um, Pam, uh, what's her name? Uh, in the re- original clip, she just says to illustrate Elizabeth, ja- and you know, and then she starts talking about Elizabeth Jackson. So they just removed the clip where she says to illustrate. So it's like one second. You, I could hardly figure out what was going on. So yeah. Also, the clips here where he's sawing off the head is interesting because in the original version, he essentially saws through the head, like straight through, and it sort of comes off. And they've also moved some stuff around, whereas, you know, there's, you know, a slight, slight clip missing where he shows uh, the body without a head um, at a different angle. Um, and so, yeah, they did move some stuff around, but it's not like anything extreme is missing, just some minor cuts. Now, this scene, which was also one of the more funnier ones, which I remember from the original version uh, featuring Jason Ribbling, <laughs> gotta love his character, this is quite different. You see all this, this insert stuff is new, and I think it it's a really interesting change as to how it sort of just basically adds to the sort of visual aid of the story. Now, one of the things which was actually changed in the scene, there's actually a small dialogue change where Jason is talking uh, about how he sort of, the killer sort of changed his MO. And in the original, he just says, sometimes he uses a circular saw, sometimes a hand saw. And then there's a pause and he says, it's ludicrous. But uh, the the sort of short ending where it's you know they say he says it's ludicrous they basically just remove that but apart from that the the dialogue is essentially uh, exactly the same so I mean there's just uh, yeah I mean there's so much little stuff so much going on oh yeah and now we get to the scenes with Cheryl which are really interesting I mean it's basically just uh, the killer sort of stalking her and doing a lot of sort of lurking around, um, but I remember, uh, I mean, this whole scene is, it's just a very airy scene, sort of leading up to uh, essentially the point where he's, you know, here, right here, sitting outside her house, and we sort of see him inside his car, uh, at the same time sort of filming her, filming her, I don't know if it's her bedroom window, but just filming her through the through the window and this scene in particular actually has quite a bit of dialogue cut away uh, I'm not gonna say that it's an, an extreme amount um, exactly like basically in in this part of the scene like right there you saw uh, an obvious cut uh, I can't remember if that's where they cut the footage but I would imagine so and I mean, as far as I can remember, I think it's just basically an elaboration of this whole thing where she sort of feels that someone might be watching her, that she sort of felt a bit uneasy as of late. And uh, I mean, as I remember, it's nothing nothing too important to the story. And it's it's just a minor cut because, I mean, the, the scene itself, watching her in the, vid- in the window there, uh, it is quite a sort of long and... and uh, you know, sort of tedious scenes. I mean, not that it's uninteresting, but it does go on. So, I mean, uh, I definitely think that the removal of those 20 seconds, it's not something that uh, that hurts the story or the overall film experience. Now, this scene, oh, God, with the, with the killer going into the house and lurking around... Um, there's, uh, there's some footage removed here, and I'm going to get back to that, but overall... Just such a vast improvement to the original. I mean, come on. It's like now we can actually see what's going on. Whereas, you know, in the old version, it's like... It's just pure darkness. Um, Obviously, I mean, yeah, the dark scenes does add to the tension. Because (laughs) you're sort of struggling uh, to understand exactly what you're watching. But I mean, oh, I love this. I love the shot where you... Just briefly, briefly see the killer in in his sort of theatrical mask. There, just reflecting in the in the glass. But it's always it's all also a very sort of brief cut. So this will obviously give uh, much more power to the reveal later on, where we sort of get a bit of a ju- jump scare just seeing his uh, his sort of mask light up uh, in the upcoming scene. But I love the fact you know we see the shadow and we sort of see him lurking around. It's uh, it's just great, and I think we might be able to 
there was the yeah there was the cut obviously cut to the footage and then he walks up the stairs and uh, there is some footage missing here like i said and uh, there's basically nothing happens so it it's definitely a good cut uh, he essentially just you know he just lurks around for like, like 20 seconds more um sort of just leading up to him uh, going up the stairs and that's essentially it um, and apart from that there's really nothing changed to this whole sequence uh, in the house but I mean looking at the scene the way it is now and comparing it to what it looked like on the old rough cut that you you could find online I mean this is I think this scene is one of the most disturbing or tension building maybe not most disturbing but definitely in terms of tension and how it's directed and just how they execute the scene it's ah oh, it, it gives me chills every time and just watching it on blu-ray and, and realizing all the details in it it's just oh it's like i'm, I'm getting like my pulse is going up just just watching this because i think it's such a such a brilliantly edited scene um and it's i mean i think that the the disturbing parts of this movie like this scene like all the other stuff i think that the the reason why people might think that this film is too extreme obviously comes from a lot of the gore and a lot of the on-screen violence that is available even though it might be like not very good like resolution like it's not very visible as to what exactly is going on but i think that the you know that that's sort of like the reason why people have a problem with this film because it does show a lot of on-screen gore which is which is essentially not entertaining that is it really is visually disturbing to watch uh, however i think that scenes like this where it's just this extreme tension building uh and you know just seeing the killer through through the the open open door there i mean this is remember that this is from 2007 i mean i think that this this i said it before i really think this film was before its time because it is so i don't think people were ready for this at that time i mean obviously there's a lot of cult movies and classic 80s horror like I'm not saying people didn't love horror but i think that the extreme elements in terms of gore and stuff uh really sort of rubs people the wrong way but i think if you look at scenes like this where you have the theatricality of the killer with his mask and this whole sort of tension building i think that this is something that would have worked so much better today if had a, the film had been released today uh, like i mean yeah it is released today because it just came out on blu-ray but you see what i mean i mean looking back at like the horror history like what kind of movies have come out uh, in recent years and uh, i think with movies like the saw franchise uh, it's something that sort of you know made more like gore porn as we would say like these overly violent films which almost seem to glorify uh, the use of horrific imagery or, or sort of on-screen gore and, and blood um, I think with with those films and the success of those films I think that a movie like this would have been much more easy to accept for an audience whereas back in 2007 I think this was just considered uh, a bit too graphic and and you know it just uh, i just don't think it it caught on in the way that it would have done today but i don't know it's it's all speculation but that's just my my two cents and uh yeah i mean this this the the thing about these scenes in particular where he's just lurking around and there's no particular violence i mean we are leading up to to some violent episodes occurring but like this scene, which was also overly, incredibly dark. I didn't even know what was going on. When I was watching this on the Blu-ray, it's like, wow, I haven't seen this before. Did they add this? And then like, no, yeah, I did see it. It was just pitch black, so I couldn't tell what the hell was going on in the in the old version. But I mean, th this to me is some of the most uh, most things that make you feel most uneasy because it's such a extreme invasion of privacy. 
just you know being there not essentially doing anything not sort of attacking people or stabbing them or killing them or whatever but just being there so close and sort of filming them and just i mean the total invasion of privacy is just such so awful and oh this is such this is what i was leading up to talking about before we just flips on the light it's such a great jump scare and just i'll just hold oh wow fucking insane jesus and this this whole chase scene uh wow I mean, I think that the like the silhouette shots here and like the the adding of the musical cue in the background of the chase is obviously you know could be disturbing, but I think it works and I think it really adds. It's just it's so so brilliantly shot, and also one of the things which is interesting. There's a clip coming up now, uh, another news segment with the same newscaster like we saw before, Kimberly something. Um, which are, they're they're just cutting to here. <clears throat> I think it's interesting because even though this is a new clip, it's actually replacing a clip of a different actress. So it's essentially, you know, it's essentially exactly the same clip, just a new actress. But I mean, there is some minor, extremely minor change to the dialogue actually, um, and this basically consists of the fact that uh, in this version. Uh, the newscaster says this weekend's ends in tragedy for one family whereas in the original version uh, she said this weekend ended in tragedy for two families referring to obviously to uh, Cheryl's family and to her boyfriend's family so I don't know why the you know grammatical juxtaposition took place here if they changed it or it was just a incorrect reading or yeah, I really have no idea, but thought it was a very sort of odd change. And I mean, overall, I'm just thinking, like, the whole thing that they're switching actors, like they're replacing actors for the new segments, it's such a weird detail, because, I mean, just... I'm just thinking about the supporting cast, like, yeah, I was in the movie, and then, like, no, we changed you for someone else. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it's just... <laughs> I can just... Kind of a weird situation for for the actors, I guess. Um, but anyway, um, I mean, what can what can you say about these? Are to me some of the most disturbing scenes, you know, where you know with with Cheryl when she's sort of tied up and gagged, and then the whole sort of torture scenes. It's just, I mean, the theatricality and the just iconography of this killer using the masks i think it is i think it really shows how this film was like i said before it's time it feels like something that we've seen so much of in recent years with uh, modern day horror films um but at that point i think it was uh something very disturbing i think it would yeah i think it would have done better today this scene is interesting with uh, officer cummings uh, it is essentially exactly the same footage but they sort of rearranged it a bit i think that the sort of middle part is at the end or the end part is at the middle they did some cutting and moved it around there is a very brief segment uh, that's been removed where the officer essentially asks the cameron as to how graphic he can get in his descriptions uh, and the cameraman essentially says that you know you can get as as graphic if, as you want. So, uh, but that's essentially that's essentially the only difference to that scene, and it's just an eleven second cut. Now this footage, on the other hand, is interesting because this here's a whole segment of new stuff, which is uh, the stuff shot in the car uh, with the FBI profiler Felton Lewis, who we've seen throughout the film, but we haven't really seen him in this uh, situation. We saw some of this footage, um, the interview in the car, that was actually part of the movie in the beginning, uh, in the new opening before the title sequence. Uh, so this is sort of a continuing of that footage. Here is also some new stuff with a completely new character, uh, 
uh, and this is uh, basically this this guy Ethan Steiermark, Steiermark, however you want to pronounce it. It's an entirely new scene. He was never featured in the original or rough cut version, and he just talks briefly here about the concept of uh, commedia dell'arte. So it was a sort of like a forty second uh, cut and. It is, um, the whole, the footage in the car, like I mentioned with uh, Felton Lewis, is all new footage, as well as the footage uh, with uh, Ethan. Uh, however, it can be mentioned that, you know, some of the dialogue is sort of talking points that were there before. Um, essentially, the first portion where he rides in the car, that is stuff that was... Uh, you know, we we saw him basically sitting at a desk before talking about the same talking points, but now they replaced it with him riding in the car. Uh, however, there are some footage missing from the scene. There were some crime scene photos, which were originally in that that shot, uh, which were now removed. Um, and so we, but we did also get some new stills showing the the masks, as uh, as Felton is talking about the purpose of the masks and. Whatnot. So overall, I mean, it's it's. I would say it's changed for the better, but it's obviously always uh, a little bit of a you know downside when they remove stuff that was actually something good. And I mean, oh Jesus! I mean, I got you got to hand it to. So to I, I'm saying I'm saying Cheryl now, but I mean her her real name is Stacy. And I mean, as an as an actor, this is just she goes through such a transformation. Uh, and I mean, she is uh, they're really changing her. I mean, from from being this this normal, you know, girl next door uh, like everybody else, and then just with time as the movie progresses how she she sort of uh you know disfigured based on on the torture that she has to endure and i mean it's just uh, for you th- those of you who don't know it stacy is um, actually um, john eric dowdle's uh, director john eric dowdle's uh, wife um and it's uh, I don't know. I, I I don't know if that has something to do with how she was able to put up with this. I mean, obviously, actors and actresses are have a really hard job a lot of the time, and I mean, this just goes to show this is. I mean, just just such an incredible performance, and I mean, it's not just about uh, Cheryl either. I mean. The killer himself is uh, obviously an, uh, portrayed by an actor who gets very overlooked on account of that is he's just so anonymous. I mean, there's no big reveal as to who he is or like you never get to see his face or anything, which I think is just uh, it's just a remarkable performance. Uh, the actor playing the, the killer is, is named Ben Mesmer. And he's essentially just credited as Edward Carver. I don't know if that's an, a name that's actually officially mentioned in the film. I don't think so. But yeah, Ben Mess from everybody. Incredible, incredible performance from him as well. Now the clip with uh, Cheryl's mother here. That's something that was originally a bit longer. It's not much, but she essentially sort of pleaded with the killer through the media uh, for a bit a bit longer. Uh, I think we're talking roughly 10 seconds or so. And the preceding uh, news clip, which was uh, with Kimberly Plummer reappearing once again, uh, this clip is also replacing an older version of the same clip featuring a different actress. Uh, so it was simply the same actress that was replaced in the similar news clip uh, earlier in the film. So they sort of went with continuity and replaced her throughout the film. But uh, apart from that, I mean, the, the overall content is essentially the same. So it's not like they're changing the story in, in any particular way. But I mean, I am. I want to return to to the killer. I mean, I think that Ben Mesmer is remarkable uh, in a sense in this performance. And it's like... And I mean, it's it's sort of like you you tend to forget that there is actually an actor behind the mask. 
I mean, when you have a killer like this, where you never get to see his face, it's like, I mean, I can draw a comparison to a movie like Star Wars, where you have Darth Vader, who is, I mean, he's played by one person. I mean, the actor inside the suit, that's one thing. But then you have James Earl Jones doing the voice, and it's like, it sort of gives this strange, otherworldly sense to who the character is and I mean much in the same sense here where you have an actor whose face is never shown it sort of gives a mysticism and a and a sort of otherworldly sense to the character where you sort of tend to forget who the actor is this scene with uh, Cheryl putting on the mask that has been slightly edited you can see some brief cuts here in the original rough cut version uh, it was just a few seconds longer but it essentially showed her putting the mask on sort of pulling it over her head but that's essentially the only real difference to it and i mean it's not like you're losing anything but i would like to keep it in because it does sort of add a little bit of the tension and then there's just a bit of a pause here with some establishing shots of the city of poughkeepsie so yeah now, we do have some alterations in this. We see uh, some news clips, some papers and stuff, and headlines. Then there are some digital effects added to the Blu-ray, which are making it look more like a sort of microfish viewer and stuff like that. And I mean, I would say that it looks a lot better. I think it uh, certainly improves on the original version. I mean, the original was basically just showing a bunch of news clippings, like pictures of a... Uh, newspaper whereas now it really looks like one of those typical uh, microfish viewers now this is a pretty interesting scene uh, this is a new character called jennifer griswold and she's essentially replacing a newscaster in the old version called jerry smith and uh, i gotta say it's a uh, very much an improvement i mean the the overall you know overlay with the news logs and watch it's just much better i mean the the old version looked uh, pretty amateuristic um, as well as the, the acting by the character of Jerry Smith it's just it played much less professional uh, than this version does so definitely a great improvement but there is something interesting about that scene though because uh, originally we had Jerry Schmidt talking about essentially the same talking point and sort of coining the phrase the Water Street Butcher um, but what's interesting is uh, in the original version uh, there was also an 18 second clip with a police commissioner Richard Harrington and he was sort of questioned about the fact that all of the butchers victims appeared to be prostitutes uh, so I mean we're getting this part of the story as well but they sort of you know they just changed it a bit so now we're hearing it from the newscaster sort of saying that you know uh, they are urging prostitutes to sort of be on the lookout and be careful so I mean it's uh, it's essentially you get the same information but they did change some of the characters so I don't know if uh, Richard Harrington uh, the police commissioner uh, ever actually appears in the blu-ray version I don't think he actually does and now we are getting to what was probably my one of my least favorite moments uh, in the rough cut version uh, and not that there's anything wrong with this scene. I mean, I love the iconography. I love the use of the gas mask and, and all this. And it's, I mean, it's a pivotal scene where uh, Cheryl is essentially, you know, forced or, or is, is, is made to slit the throat of her, her co-captive, so to speak. So, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a brutal scene. Uh, but in the original rough cut version... Uh, the scene essentially went on for about 15 seconds longer, I would say. Uh, and the, basically the stuff that they could cut away is uh, you just get to see uh, less of her reaction. Once the throw is cut, we just basically... They have removed 15 seconds of footage right about, uh, right about here where we're about to see her... Uh, throat getting slit and uh, so yeah I mean I mean throat slitting is always really disturbing on film I would say uh, if it's done good and in this case it is done very well but yeah they they originally went on for 15 seconds more 
just showing her as she sort of, you know, convulsing and stuff like that. I don't know. I just found it like it's one of the things which it it felt like you know, we we this works much better. It's just you get the impact and you don't really have to squirm just seeing you know her her twisted face so it's just i i think this uh, this works much more in favor of uh, of the blu-ray i got to say but i mean it's it's not like i dislike gore uh, i mean i'm okay with it but i guess the basic premise i i just enjoy the less is more concept i mean i think that if you can build tension and you can uh, create a horrific atmosphere uh, using less gore or as as little gore as necessary. I think that's always a win. And I mean, looking at my all-time favorite horror film, which I guess is a sort of tie-in with this one, uh, which would be the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original one from Toby Hooper. Uh, that's just a, a prime example of a film where you know you have a movie which is absolutely it's just horrifying to watch and it's just one of those it's a complete adrenaline rush from start to finish but it's still so cleverly edited where it's like a film where you don't actually see any blood at all so it's i mean this is i feels like i mean like some of this stuff that's coming up with uh, with the kids here like this scene where he sort of uh, invites these kids into his home uh, I'm sort of I'm sort of surprised that they're. I mean, not that this is especially graphic, but uh, it still. I think it's, it really shows some some balls keeping stuff like this in because it's just. I think this is some of the like, even if nothing happens, I think this is some of the things that really gets to you. Uh, like not, and I mean, I'm not a parent, but I can imagine that you know parents watching horror movies and watching a film like this this is the kind of scene that will get you uh, just the recognition of of what kind of monsters are out there in in reality that could potentially harm your children and this is also i mean personally i i'm a big fan of horror movies of all sorts but i think that the thing about found footage that has sort of captivated the throughout the years um, when, you know, after watching movies like Blair Witch and sort of getting into the genre, I think that it's stuff like this, uh, like, you know, the horror of Poughkeepsie Tape is something that is grounded in reality. Like, we are talking about a, a found footage movie about a serial killer as opposed to a found footage movie like, like Blair Witch, for instance, which I also think is a classic. I think it's a great, great horror, horror movie. Uh, but I think that movies of this nature, where we are talking about a more realistic danger, we are talking about a serial killer, uh, someone who potentially exists. I mean, we know this is, you know, people who operate in our society. Uh, we do have serial killers. It's something that's been documented. Um, and in comparison to a movie like Blair Witch, where you will have a threat which is much more fictional, you will have a a witch or a ghost or I mean other films of, of the same genre like uh, Paranormal Activity also also great movies in terms of scares but to me uh, found footage horror is sort of the boundary it crosses when it moves over to a more realistic approach uh, portraying serial killers or like the works of serial killers or their video diaries or, or things you know, the sort of route that this film takes. I think that's part of why it is so iconic. And I mean, there's several other films who have sort of uh, dived into the same uh, sub-genre or part of the genre. Um, and I can think of, you know, stuff like Man Bites Dog from 1992 uh, or the, the Last Horror Movie from 2003, another great example of where we are sort of invited to uh, sort of take this journey or sort of, you know, invited into the world, uh, the video diary of a serial killer, and sort of seeing actual accounts of how he lives his life. Um, oh, and probably another one of my favorites uh, in, in that part of the genre, uh, which is obviously the movie Long Pigs, 
a Canadian film from 2007, which is uh, definitely one of those indie horror, uh, just uh, <laughs> just an absolute, uh, absolute delight to watch. And it's also one of those horror movies which is actually much more of a dark comedy. So if you haven't checked that one out, be sure to, to look it up. It's absolutely an amazing film. And I saw it, saw it very much sort of like a back-to-back feature with this when this came out. to just happened to be watching them... Uh, very very closely together so they've always stayed with me as these great examples now this scene you see some inserts here so fingerprints this is stuff that was newly added for the blu-ray but i mean apart from that uh, the scene is essentially exactly the same Um, there is however a scene coming up which has some notable changes to it and it's where they bring in uh, the police uh, jim foley who is uh, uh, accused of the the crime of being the uh, Water Street butcher, uh, they have added some digital effects just when he's walking through the hall here in the upcoming clip. So it's basically one of those simple ways which they've used throughout the film of sort of making the scenes look better, just adding like new news logos and making it look much more up to date and less amateuristic, like what you see here. So they've also removed a short clip of Police Chief Harrington as well as a clip of. Uh, prosecuting attorney uh, Sandra Willits just before the interview. This superimposed image here, uh, that's something that's been added over the dialogue, but the overall dialogue is the same. There's just a single line missing where Hank Foley says that his fiance left him uh, on account of the fact that she didn't want to bear a serial killer's grandchildren. And I mean, these things are all very short. Um, the the clips I mentioned before, they just amount to like 18 seconds of uh, Richard Harrington and the prosecuting attorney clip. So there's not a lot of footage missing. Um, and like I said, the interview with Hank, it's just a single line. So uh, overall, I mean, I like the line about his fiance leaving him. I think it's a something they could have kept in, but it's definitely not uh, essential to the plot, so... I mean, it uh, doesn't really matter, to be honest. And then we got this uh, upcoming clip here where the press sort of, you know, talks to Hank about the guilty verdict, verdict, and uh, it's essentially exactly the same, but they are cutting it a little bit short. They've added some new news logos and stuff over it, uh, but in the original version, the press also asks him if he believes that his father did it, and he says that he does believe that. Uh, this thing with the you know the, the victims speaking uh, is uh, something that was cut short. I think you basically had uh, one more victim, which is not even present here, and the segments we do see were also uh, longer, but it's not a lot of footage missing. I would say it's about maybe 20 seconds at the most uh, and there's also some different editings done here uh, essentially like all of this this montage here where you hear Cheryl's voice sort of building and building uh, higher and higher this is all a new montage I think it's quite effective uh, it was originally played just there was a clip with a character called Bill, McCor- Bill McCormick sort of like a news anchor who did like a 30 second uh, segment about like the death death watch where people were coming out to uh, sort of witness the uh, decision on the execution. Uh, whereas now it's uh, roughly a 40 second clip instead, like this montage, and then we just end on the girl uh, on the balloon, so to speak. And then when we, you know, move over to this reenactment sequence, then we're back to uh, the same way it was shown in the rough cut version. So there's Nothing in particular changed right here. It's just sort of leading up to this, the whole montage that we just saw. That's uh, that's something completely uh, new on the on the Blu-ray version. And I can also mention that the uh, audio, the background scoring, uh, which we can briefly hear during the the montage, which we just saw, where we have Cheryl's voice, sort of keep repeating the same words um, the the musical scoring in that clip the new montage clip that is essentially the as far as I can tell it is the same scoring that used to be included uh, in the um, the earlier scene that I mentioned with the little girl getting abducted and I 
mentioned that that scene used to have a music cue on it and essentially I think they th that is the music that was now used for that montage. Um, I'm not 100% sure uh, but in any case it is uh, a very similar uh, scoring in case you were curious to know. Oh and I love I love the scene where they do the little quick cut just showing him with his mask on when he's lying on the on his deathbed, I guess you could say. And then we just zoom in on the girl with the balloon again. It's just uh, I'd say it's a, it's a, all of this sort of like the final act. It's a very great composite, I think. They really do they really do a really great job um, with the whole sort of reveal as to whether he's uh, you know what's essentially happened and uh, i mean up until this point and any any like if you haven't seen the movie for one reason just yes yeah, spoiler alert but uh, i highly doubt that you you haven't seen the film before watching the commentary if you do then that's just a that's just a mortal sin right there <laughs> never listen to the commentary if you haven't watched the movie beforehand <laughs> Ah, right here. So this clip, uh, one of the killer's homemade movies, this scene is entirely new on the Blu-ray. This was never included uh, in the rough cut version. And I think it's a great scene. We essentially just zoom in, see the television where they sort of announce that Foley has now been executed. And then the killer sets the camera down on a table in front of Cheryl. So, I mean, I just think it's a fantastic way to reveal the the truth that he's, uh, the killer is alive and Cheryl is alive. Now, uh, there's an upcoming scene with Hank Foley doing an interview. And before that, we originally in the rough cut actually had a longer clip of 25 seconds with the James Foley's lawyer. Where he essentially talked about how a guilty man acts versus how an innocent one acts. As well as he mentioning that uh, James always maintained his innocence. Which I think is uh, interesting and sad to see that clip gone. Now this interview with with Hank is essentially based on the same source material, but it's missing uh, a few bits. It's missing the opening word and the last word of the interview, where is where it's essentially the same thing. He's just saying bullshit. Uh, and there's also a segment which I believe is originally from the middle of the interview, where he talks about the fact uh, about how people will react when they sort of you know, realize that he is related to uh, to James. Uh, so um, I'm sort of sad to see that go. Uh, it's about 19 seconds worth of footage, but uh, still pretty good. Now this new segment here with Irwin, uh, it is, uh, you know, a segment that was in uh, the old version as well, but there it, it adds a three second shot uh, of a newspaper article, which I think is coming up. Um, which is just, you know, it's just to illustrate it, it's something like just right here, these three seconds zooming in on a newspaper article. It's, the audio is uh, essentially exactly the same, they just, they just added a newspaper, newspaper overlay as an illustration. And the same goes for this clip, here we have another insert, um, which, you know, serves the same purpose. I think it's actually really good, I think it's, uh... I think it's just, you know, it is a great way to sort of maintain the footage, but sort of enriching it by adding a, an extra visual overlay. Um, and now we're cutting to a new scene here. This is a scene which was left uh, intact. There's no difference between this scene and the rough cut version scene, except, of course, that it is greatly improved in terms of the visuals and the definition and resolution and whatnot. So, yeah, it definitely looks a lot better. Um, and I mean, I think this this scene is just so. It is just really unnerving and such a such a wonderfully slowly edited build up where it's just one long clip, and I mean, you you know, uh, you know the horror before the uh, before the the actors do. Uh, it's like the girl getting into the back of the car. I mean, you know this is not going to turn out well. Uh, and it's just such a 
creepy feeling just listening to the killer and i mean this is also something we obviously are coming back to the fact that we never get to see the killer's face we never get to see who he really is we just learn about him through all of these horrific acts and that there's there's never really sort of there's never any resolution or any sort of uplifting ending where you know things turn out for the better it's just a such a incredibly dark film and i remember like in my sort of early days of experiencing horror or when i sort of first came into contact with movies of this nature uh, where there is no typical hollywood ending no sort of uplifting scene where they catch the killer or he dies or there's no sort of revenge sequence where things sort of quote unquote turn up then i mean it's just going to be such a absolutely awful uh, realization for you uh, and i mean i think uh, i remember myself watching i think one of the one of the first films i watched which was you know this sort of downward spiral that didn't have a didn't have a happy ending to it uh, i think it was a film called eden lake uh, and i remember how much i just i just loved the movie i really you know i loved the setup and i thought it like oh this is so this is so relentless and so you know uh, raw and 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 ruthless and and just just a great horror film i just loved it when i was watching it and it came to the end and spoiler if you haven't seen it but it doesn't turn out well uh and i was just so shocked by it and so angry and frustrated and it really like you know i just i felt like i'd been it feels like you've been violated you know you sort of go into a movie experience and watching a horror movie and you're thinking like well you know it's it's gonna turn out all right i mean it's there's a lot of bad stuff happening now but i'm sure that the like the the girl the innocent girl who's a virgin who you know all of the cliches i mean she will survive she will essentially it will turn around and she will get the bad guy and you know she will survive it will be a horrible ex- hor- horrific experience for her but she will survive and then with movies like this where that doesn't happen when it just you know you you think it's gonna go well but it doesn't and it just goes terrible if you're not prepared for it and if you a person who haven't seen films like that in the past it is definitely gonna make it mark makes it make its mark on you uh and it's definitely one of those things which will I mean, I think people, if they haven't seen that kind of stuff before and are not expecting it, I think it can definitely sort of turn them into giving a bad review, sort of saying that, you know, oh, this is crap, this is just glorifying violence and yada yada. And I mean, to me, it's not really true. I think you can make, it's certainly different types of genres, making a film that is sort of, you know, horrifying, like... uh, you know whatever it is but where you have some sort of uplifting ending where good essentially uh, wins the battle and you know the killer or the bad guy is killed or you know some sort of retribution or going to jail or whatever it is uh, i think films like that are definitely a different genre and a much more sort of hollywood ending production as i would like to say Uh, and with films like this i think it's very easy if you don't really know about this type of genre where things go bad uh, it can be extremely infuriating and i think people can be giving bad reviews based on that saying that you know oh this is crap because there's no uplifting ending and in the beginning i also felt like that i was very sort of frustrated and angry uh, with it i can also mention that this scene which is just it's just a horrifying scene but i mean in the rough cut version we really didn't see much because it is uh, the picture quality is so so poor as to what exactly is going on and i gotta say that just the same with this version i still don't know what exactly is going on in the end here uh I, I'm it's like I still don't know exactly what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the killer uh, standing there from behind and you hear her screaming, but you don't really it's not like he's she's still in the car, so it's not like you really know what Oh wow. Um this 
I mean, out of all the scenes in the movie, this has to be the most unnerving, f t total fucking mind fuck that I've ever seen. I love the editing and I love the reveal. This is... I mean, it's scenes like this that make me feel like, how is this movie not more popular, uh, or well, popular, not more known at least than it is? I mean, the... the it's so simple, just, you know, this guy walking on, on all fours, and then he has this this double-sided or, or two-headed mask, or he essentially, yeah, he has one mask over his face, and then he has another mask on top of his head, and it is the most creepy thing I have ever fucking seen, uh, and it's also, oh, I mean, just look at this. And then he has this weird sort of apparatus on his hand with these like two steel spikes on it, which almost feels like it reminds some, it's sort of reminiscent of Freddy Krueger or something. And it's just, it's such a horrifying scene and also the, the effects. Uh, I mean, I know that this is one of those scenes which had me, it's, uh, it's like it's over, over the top and it's so, so gruesome. And in terms of the, the violence and the effects and the gruesome nature, that's something I could essentially do without. Um, because it is really, really unnerving and it's a disgusting scene to watch. But the whole build-up and the character just sneaking up to her and you, you know, having this uh, sort of building score behind it. It is just... It's incredible. I mean, I get... Uh, I'm raising my pulse here just watching it. It's... <sighs> Alright. <laughs> Shaking it off. I think that, you know, in terms of the stuff I've been talking about before, about how this film was before its time, um, in a sense, I think that... I'm not saying there hasn't been extreme movies. I'm not saying that there hasn't been, uh, you know, found footage films uh, that have been... Uh, dark or I mean it's not like you know this was in 2007 so I mean there had been quite a few found footage horror films uh, or well it's actually a mockumentary if you want to get technical but what I'm saying is it's not like the genre was unexplored um, but I definitely think that this is a film which was much more violent than a lot of the found footage film found footage movies had been before um, now this scene with uh, the Joseph Danvers character this is uh, primarily unchanged, but there there is a sort of snippet of information that was removed. Uh, it's sort of like, it's just a 12 seconds uh, at the end of the clip where he expands a little bit on uh, on how they tracked the killer using uh, a map quest uh, download. But I mean, the, the overall scene is, uh, there's not a lot of, not a lot of stuff missing there. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that, to me at least, when I was watching, sort of getting into the found footage genre and, and uh, you know, trying to find titles to watch, and then I found this one, um, which was like this underground uh, phenomena, which is like people di didn't really know, and I think that the whole thing with the movie getting pulled from release by MGM for whatever it, whatever reason it was, um, is uh, something that helped the film because I think this is a movie which definitely benefits from being experienced as this uh, this underground film like you get a bootleg and it's it's passed around and someone gives it to you and you're sort of able to hunt down and acquire this this obscure footage and this obscure movie which which people don't know much about the history of uh, I think that is like the perfect set up for experiencing this film because it really intensifies the mystery and the impact that it will have on you. Um, I mean obviously I'm so happy that they finally released this uh, and I mean I think it's amazing that they put it out on Blu-ray as well and it's just a shame in some way that it took took 10 years uh, to do. I mean obviously good for the movie but uh, 
still i mean i would have loved to see this in in better quality at an earlier point so i mean it's a mixed bag it's it was good for the film but seeing as i i sort of watched it uh, pretty early on uh, as i can remember and then you know for me obviously it was a long wait now this clip with cheryl's mother um is uh, something that was changed you can see the insert here with a missing sign that's something that was added uh, apart from that, I mean, the dialogue is essentially the same um, in terms of what they kept in. They did remove uh, some of this interview. There's approximately six, six seconds of dialogue um, where she she just says, I, I realize... I really realized at that moment that I didn't that I guess I didn't have as much hope as I thought I had. It's such a weird saying. So uh, anyway, moving on to the scene, the whole sort of uh, scene at the hospital, all the shots of Cheryl and stuff like that. This is actually quite a different scene. Uh, the Blu-ray essentially adds 17 seconds worth of stills uh, showing her wounds. Like all that stuff uh, is added uh, as. Uh, as uh, Dr. Arnold here talks about the body. Now, uh, I, essentially some of the stills are new uh, and, and some of the stuff originally appeared later in the clip. Uh, but in the entire scene, the audio is the same. They just sort of add the new stills like this one and sort of place them them in different clips. And the, the whole ending of the scene ends in a different way, uh, where in the... Like you know, in the original, you know, it was just edited differently, uh, but overall, it is like the content is the same. They just they jumbled it around and using some different source material, but the the audio and like it's not you're missing any any dialogue or, or such. So uh, yeah. Um, another thing that can be mentioned around here is that the Blu-ray is uh, removing a 47th clip of Cheryl's mother, which is essentially taken from the, the same interview situation as we saw earlier, uh, where she talks about bringing Cheryl home from the hospital. Uh, and I'm sort of sad to see this go, because it was a very sort of, uh, very sort of tender uh, moment. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's certainly one of those... One of those moments which I would love to have kept in. And I mean, speaking of uh, speaking of tender moments, this is like uh, the whole sort of final interview with Cheryl, um, referring to some of the stuff I mentioned before. How how I think it's it's such an amazing journey and, and a remarkable transformation of of her character. Like we see her as this happy-go-lucky child uh, at the beginning in the new opening sequence and we see her as a uh, you know like just like every other like young woman uh, you know happy and in school and you know then she starts getting stalked and, and she's captured and she's tortured and just little by little we sort of see her transformation and then this final scene where she she you know has essentially very much full-blown Stockholm syndrome, uh, sort of thinking that her her um, abductor um, has left her, and that you know one day he will come back, and that he he essentially loves her, and it's just it's such a it's it's such a powerful scene um, to me, and I think it really shows the. The amazing span of uh, of Stacy as an actress, uh, just how this uh, it's just a heartbreaking scene. I mean, I think I hear some comments about this movie how they how people don't like um, some of the some of the acting in the film, um, but this usually doesn't have anything to do with with uh, with Stacy's character uh, it's usually about uh, uh, like the supporting cast which I still don't get I mean I love I love all the acting in this film it's some, something that really stuck with me as it's good stuff now this new news clip here is interesting because it is essentially it replaces an older news clip uh, which was you know also about the grave robbing but they have a, uh, they've added a completely new clip with sort of like the same content, but there's a different actor, 
and uh, there's also added you know here some clips of the grave as well as a cassette there which we we didn't see in the rough cut version so that's definitely interesting the insert here with the the shot of the boots getting into the car that is something that was added to the blu-ray which was never included uh, on the old version but the dialogue uh, in this it's um, uh, I mean the, it's just overlaid so I mean the uh, the old dialogue remains uh, the same, as well as in this clip with Simon Alray, we have uh, we have the same dialogue, but we are added this insert uh, showing the titles or sort of like the unrecovered uh, missing missing uh, tapes that they never found. Uh, so all of this stuff, all these inserts over the dialogue, that is something that was added. Um, but the the dialogue is. Uh, is exactly the same so I think that's nice it really does help illustrate illustrate the point and also uh, we are coming up to the final final sequence before the end credits um, which I think is really nice it actually goes back to to where it all came from um, using uh, the same type of footage as we see in the opening credits just this amazing footage uh, from uh, Cheryl when she was uh, a young girl and then we just sort of freeze frame and we just have four Cheryl Dempsey and so this is uh, this scene has been changed uh, in a sense whereas in the original it was just a, a black screen and then we had just had four Cheryl Dempsey printed in white so it was very much more a contrast these sort of sudden impact like it's just thrown on on uh, on screen um, but now we have sort of like the the great connection with the beginning of the movie uh, and sort of seeing Cheryl as a young girl again so I, I prefer this ending I think it is a uh, better uh, better version essentially but uh, yeah like I've, this is uh, this is the movie we've now gone through the whole thing. I'm really amazed at to how uh, how difficult uh, this was. I mean, I this is my first ever feature length commentary track, and I did have to change some stuff in editing because uh, you know technology isn't always on on your side. Um, but uh, yeah, overall I think it worked uh, pretty well. But I'm actually surprised that you know I. This is probably maybe one of the few movies which I felt felt compelled to do a commentary on because it is something that I've been spending so much time on, sort of researching the differences between the two versions and trying to compare them. So, uh, but I was surprised to see just how hard it is to do a commentary track because if you are to make any sort of um, commentary on the um, what's happening visually in a scene it is incredibly difficult to just keep track. I mean, if you have a lot of stuff to to talk about, it is can be very difficult to sort of, um, you know, to sort of improvise based on what you're seeing because the visual impression of a scene versus, um, you know, you, you want to say something, you want to get a, an idea across, especially with a project like this where there are so many editorial changes that you want to point out and they're coming at you like a hundred miles a minute, it can be yeah, really quite difficult. So, uh, yeah, I certainly hope that you you enjoyed this, thought it was informative, and, um, yeah, I guess just want to thank you all for, thank you all for listening. Uh, I mean, I'm, yeah, I've actually been talking for quite a long time. I, I, I did do this commentary track actually in uh, several parts, like I... I didn't record the whole thing in one setting, which you can probably tell. There's actually quite a few sort of cuts and the, the audio sort of switches around a little bit. And there's, I know there are also some uh, some edit glitches where I'll I'll almost uh, be sort of I'll al almost be interrupting myself because the cut between like the old uh, audio and the the next clip which I'm starting at another point uh, for some reason there will be like an editorial glitch and this is not something that you know I fucked up while I was just doing uh, post-production on this it's just something that happened uh, on account of the um, the recording tool I was using uh, whereas for, for some reason it 
didn't just effectively uh, add to the old footage for some reason there was a glitch but i mean that's just this stuff that, stuff that happens um but yeah i've been <laughs> i've been talking for quite a while and so i'm, I'm quite actually uh, quite uh, tired um and you might be wondering why the hell I'm still talking. Well, uh, I am I really wanted to keep you here uh, through the um, end credits because we actually have a hidden scene coming up, uh, which takes place right after the end credits. And we are coming up to it here in a little bit. Uh, and this is the footage that we are about to see is essentially the same footage. It's not like they changed any source material or anything but they did remove some stuff uh, but it is so brief that if you don't know about it you would never you would never uh, notice it um, and I mean yeah obviously if you don't know about it you're not gonna notice it if you never saw the old version you were never gonna know the change but even if you saw the old old rough cut version you might not notice this uh, the footage is the same, but they cut away a split second at the end of the sequence. I mean, you know the killer says, like, you know, uh, I'll let you live as long as you don't blink. And then you just see this terrified woman looking at the screen. They cut away a split second. In the rough cut uh, old version, you see her close her eyes and blink. And then it cuts, but that's it. So thank you very much for watching or listening. Hope you enjoyed it, hopefully. And yeah, I'd love to see you again. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, jeez.